Hey everyone, Kyle Mike here from MLive.com. I'm joined by Justin Rogers. Uh, Lions are coming off that, that win yesterday, Justin, but I got some bad news this week with Larry Warford dealing with a knee injury, and it appears to be at least somewhat significant. Um, he's going to be out several weeks. Uh, for sure, don't expect, expect him to play this week against the Cardinals. And so that means it's uh, Travis Swanson time. Travis Swanson. Yeah. Thoughts? Uh, if you would have asked me a week ago, and you told me Larry Warford was going to be replaced by Travis Swanson. It it might have been, outside of Matthew Stafford, the the worst possible injury slash replacement situation in my mind. Uh, but but after seeing Swanson play, um, I, I thought he was really impressive. He's made significant strides since the preseason, since training camp. Uh, he did not look physically or mentally lost in there. There were some communication breakdowns, which has been the story of the season for the Lions offensive line, but held up really well, uh, especially in the run. You know, I, I think PFF had him ranked as the, the highest uh, run blocker on the team, and, and you could see yeah. that. You know, he moved well, and so I don't I don't think it's going to be the disaster we thought it was. Uh, I talked to Dominic Riola after the game yesterday, and he, was, he, he couldn't say enough good things about the way Travis Swanson uh, adapted to a difficult situation. Um, Swanson said, he told me that uh, he saw – Warford get hurt on a play and saw him limping around on the field and so we knew um, that he might be called upon and he saw Warford play one more play, uh, limp through it and then come off the field and so he was ready to play, he goes out there, um, some ups and downs earlier but I thought he settled in nicely um, but still has some work to do. I saw he give up three QB hurries um, so he's got some issues in pass protection but you, know, you expect those from a young guy and, and Jim Caldwell speaking today he said you know we have a lot of confidence in Swanson's ability um, but he's a guy with no experience. Warford's a guy who started 25 straight games so that's what you lose in this uh in this move and and um the lines are going to have to adapt it, it felt like the dolphins blitzed a lot and and the shortest route to the quarterback is always up the middle you know and they're bringing linebackers they were doing some stunts and some twists they were really testing out the, the middle of the offensive line that's where i mentioned the communication you know swanson's a guy that's that's trained in three positions he was right. almost uh, he played every game i think at center in college yep. so guard wasn't uh you know in his his repertoire comes here now he's got to play left guard right guard center he's got to be ready for any of those three spots um you know I, I thought he you know handled himself very well he struggled i thought early in training camp with yeah, with the absolutely. playing three positions essentially because even left and right guard are they're, they're, they're different positions and so um he struggled we saw you know snap issues you know things that never bothered him in college but you throw all of this stuff and at him three positions uh, at the pro level um, and doing it with a complicated playbook, it just seemed like a lot for him. But he has settled in nicely, and, and people that I've talked to around the building, um, they, they've been pleased with him in practice, and, and I think he's definitely the future in the interior for the Lions, probably at center um, whenever Riola moves on. And, and, um, but for now, he's the stopgap at right tackle, at, uh, sorry, right guard, and I think it's a downgrade from Warford, but it's not yeah. as big as maybe as we would have thought. You know, and I, and I don't think they condense the playbook. You know, you know, a lot of times what, what will happen in those situations, they'll simplify everything to prevent problems. But, you know, I was looking back at the film today. I wasn't, you know, focused too much on him. But he was pulling. He, he was, you know, doing uh, switch-offs on stunts. You know, there were the, the full um, playbook for the offensive line, the slides, all that stuff was there for him. They didn't dumb it down just because yeah. the rookie came in six seven plays into the game the big question for me going forward would be the the, the just the, the run blocking i know that he graded pretty well but the lines have struggled so much all, all season to rush the football part of that's been the fluidity at right tackle that's taken away it's kind of their bread and butter play at least to open the season and um, now you lose another guy on the right side and warford a, a guy bush and bell and all these guys talk about loving to run behind that guy he's their favorite um offensive lineman to run behind take him out of the equation it's just another uh twist for a run game that has struggled significant, significantly all season. And, um, you know, Arizona's pretty good defensively, and so they're going to have to, um, the Lions have to get something going on the ground to kind of, you know, just to give some kind of trade off with the, with the pass game because the offense is not good enough and <laughs> it's easy to, to, to look at the run game and see why. And uh, talk about blitzing teams. Nobody, nobody blitzes more than the Arizona Cardinals. So, mm -hmm. They're really going to test the interior of that line. Their their continuity, their communication. Um, you know, could be. You know, how many times has Stafford been sacked this year? A lot. Twenty seven now. Twenty six, twenty seven, right there. Yeah. So you know, the the Cardinals are going to to really put some pressure on Stafford up the middle, and and Swanson's going to need to step up there as well. That's what we got uh, for Justin Rogers. I'm Kyle Meinke. We are M Live. Keep it right here.